Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Tim Rumler. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Tim. Hey, guys. How are you? We're good. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get this show started. So tell us a little bit about you, kind of like what exactly do you do? Well, um, actually, I think you just had my boss on, uh, my broker, Matt Davis. Um, I, I'm a real estate agent for Real Estate One, uh, Rosemary Davis out of Marshall, Michigan. Um, as I alluded to earlier, uh, worked for Matt Davis, um, who was my broker there. Um, I am also a secondary teacher at, in Jackson. And then um, I actually own a little startup business up here in Lansing as well. So it keeps me a little bit busy. I like it. Like, well, tell us a little bit more about that. I want to hear that about that. What else do you do? Well, besides the real estate agent and the, uh, the teaching uh, teacher, I uh, found the need for in really along the lines with uh, real estate that uh, there was a need for what you would typically call home watch business. Hmm. And what that means is um, any individual who potentially, uh, whether it be snowbirds or otherwise, who would go to Florida for the winter, um, my business is called Home Watch of Mid Michigan. And what they do is, is they would employ me to come by their home, uh, check their uh, residents out uh, with a 50 point checklist and make basically keep an eye on the home while they're in Florida for the winter or Texas or Arizona, or wherever they happen to be. Hey, that's awesome. I like it. Well, yeah. we'll get back to that one a little bit here because I want to hear more about that. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> let's hear about, about how you got started in all this. Like, what did you do when you were younger? Did you like, did this, were you an agent when you were younger? Like, what did you have planned? No, actually, it's a great question. Um, I had an individual uh, come to me a few years ago who was a fellow teacher of mine. And he said, he sat me down and we were just talking and he said, listen, you're, you're coming up to the end of your teaching career in a few years. He said, the best piece of advice I can give you is have your ducks in a row for when you retire, regardless of what retirement funds you have, regardless of pension, otherwise for you know, secondary teachers in Michigan, have your ducks in a row because you're, you're pretty young. And, and what do you want to do when you get done? I never really thought about it. So um, I had an interest in, in uh, home design and architecture and otherwise. And with that being said, I took him to heart. I went and got my um, online classes done uh, in real estate. And then from there, I um, uh, got my real estate license, took the test, and here I am. So we'll be done teaching in a you know, couple of years here and, and looking forward to the opportunities down the road. So I like it. I like it. Well, how did, wh when did you first decide, Hey, maybe I'll be an agent. Tell us about that. Well, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, it, it could have gone a lot of ways. Um, I had a lot of interests as particularly trying to set myself up down the road. Um, and I, I, I knew of Matt, uh, frankly, um, I, I said, Matt, can I come in and shadow you and, and the staff in the office and, get an idea of what, you know, real estate agents uh, do and, and what the business is all about, you know, and he welcomed me in and I spent about six months there just shadowing even before I started the, the uh, online classes. And then, um, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm just, you know what, I love the business of it, but I, I, I like home design and architecture and everything that goes along with it in construction business um, so it really has just been a great opportunity so far. So yeah, that's it. I like it. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> Is there any advice that when you got, when you first started out in real estate, um, or even teaching kind of, that has just kind of moved over into real estate that you could give to anybody else starting out that would be new? Yeah. Um, too many individuals, um, and this was honestly, I just wasn't something that I necessarily came to realize my own self individually, but also individuals came to me and said, stay, kind of stay in your lane, stay narrow, but deep in your lane. Uh, don't go too wide. Don't try to take on uh, a bunch of different type of properties, not only in the clientele that you're serving, but also in the types of homes that you're, you're looking at selling as well. 
you know, find a lane, whether it be serving uh, my friends, family, and teachers, uh, close contacts, but also, uh, you know, try to develop that individual clientele, but also the types of homes, whether it be a certain price range, whether it be a certain style of home, uh, find, your, find your niche and stay in it, but go deep in that niche. That's awesome. Yeah. When you first started out in real estate also, how did that first transaction go for you? I know it's a little different from taking that exam and putting it into the real life when you're at the closing table and you're having to go through all these. <laughs> so no pressure. It was actually from a family member. Uh, oh, okay. To me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, is sometimes the case because, you know, they know of you in the business and they, yep. they either want to provide you your first listing or your first sale or otherwise and give you that opportunity. But there's also some inherent pressure that goes along with that as well. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> luckily I think we were only on the market and this was prior to, uh, you know, the current, if you will, hot market, I guess you'd say right now, uh, this was a year, year and a half ago. Um, it was only on the market for about four, four and a half months. And so it, it went pretty seamless. Uh, we had a, a few showings and a few open houses, but then uh, from there, um, it, it sold pretty quickly. So it was a little bit of pressure there, Taylor, but it, uh, <laughs> it was... Uh, uh, a pretty frictionless, um, uh, sale. So, yeah. Yeah. They added pressure with family. I mean, for me personally, I would be more nervous just because if you mess that up, that's your family member. <laughs> you well, can't really so recover from that. My first listing and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, what if I don't sell this? You know? Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That like added pressure. Now? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, well, I'm hey, glad it all went good for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So what, well, let's, let's, let's change it up a little bit. Yeah. What is the worst property or showing you've been to? You know, honestly, I haven't had, and this is not a cop out. I just have, I thought of, I thought about this the other day. I, I really have not had, and it was prompted by a, a fellow agent of mine who had a, a scary kind of a situation, not scary, but just, it was a, it was a, a bad, um, home, if you will. And it just had not been kept up. And I thought to myself, you know, I really haven't had a lot of properties that um, were really in that disarray or that dilapidated. Um, I've had more of situations where showing a home, maybe in the evening, it was the surroundings were out in the countryside uh, and maybe kind of almost like a Blair Witch Project type of setting. <laughs> but the there home itself go. was beautiful. Yeah. The home itself, I really have not had a bad home, but the settings have been a little sketchy here and there. So, <laughs> you know, but that's just part of the business, you know, and, and making sure that you're uh, in a good environment, best that you can. And uh, yeah, so that's that's really what I would say is probably the, the worst situation that I've had. Going into real estate, did you ever think of like, I know the worst case scenarios in some homes where maybe like there's someone living in the home who shouldn't be there. When you walk in at night, they're in the basement, they come out. Did you ever think about going into this? Like that might actually happen. <laughs> yeah. And you think every, you know, and they, they really try to educate you on that and okay. brokers speak to you about that. Yeah. I mean, that is nothing that would surprise me nowadays, Taylor and, yeah. and Brad. Nothing just would surprise me at all. And so, yeah, it, it, it does make you, you, you have to be prepared. Uh, you should always, you know, and, and speaking frankly, or you should always let, you know, your colleagues or your uh, family members know where you're at. Um, but yeah, frankly, you, you do have to keep that in mind because that is a, it is a possibility yeah. nowadays. So, uh, but we are, we are well-versed in, in keeping ourselves safe and, uh, uh, we're often spoken to, whether it be at conferences or even by our own brokers, as to you know making sure that you're in a situation that's going to be um, a safe and uh, um, a secure environment. Yeah. So kind of going forward in the next couple of years, I know you are retiring from teaching and you mm -hmm. are going into real estate more full time. Is that kind of the plan with it? Yeah, it, it really is. Um, you know, we... Uh, I, I, I live I, uh, in the uh, South Central Michigan area, Lansing area. Um, it's, it's the market right now is just providing a lot of opportunities for really anybody who wants to get in the business, whether it be through social media, whether it be sales of homes, uh, 
photography as windows still. And by the way, you guys are doing a great thing uh, with Thank the you. podcast. You, truly. And I, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before you're doing, um, irregardless of everything else, you guys are doing really good. Um, bring a spotlight to the business and in a po very positive light. So thank you for what you guys are doing as yeah. well. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it, the, the opportunities are presenting themselves. It, it's really a business guys. You can get truly, and I'm not, this is not just a cliche. You can get out of it as much as you want to put into it. Yep. Yeah. It's so true and, though. And, and, you know, there's, you know, there's uh frankly, will it be uh, monetarily or otherwise, uh, job satisfaction, you can get out of it what you want to put into it. And as long as you're willing to put in the work, you know, everything else is going to take care of itself. So, yeah. That's awesome. I like it. So let's change it up a bit. Let's say you had to start all over today. All you had is $1,000. How would you spend that first $1,000? <clears> I don't think it's any secret. And I just alluded to it a moment ago. Uh, social media is where it's at nowadays. It, it really, really is. And with that, uh, whether it be through Facebook advertising, whether it be through consulting um, that uh, anybody that you might employ or online uh, information that you master class on social media, whatever it happens to be, that's what I were, where I would tell really anybody who's an independent contractor or, or uh, working as a, an entrepreneur or a startup, you know, spend in social media, spend that extra thousand dollars if you have it um, in social media, and, and you won't regret it. It's it's it, the the ROI, the return on investment is just it's it's bountiful. So, yeah, uh, that's where I would spend it. Uh, Facebook uh, advertising or otherwise, if you have a business, social media, um, and, and then from there, any other maybe uh, social media equipment that you might need as well. So, I like it. Awesome. Is there any good business book that you've read that you could recommend to anybody in the business at all? Oh, good question. Uh, you know, I, the uh, cliche answers, there's a lot of executive and administrative um, books out there, but I think a couple that really just encompass not only the business world, but just being a good person, um, but also being a good leader. Um uh, Extreme Ownership by Jacko Willink is one. Uh, Brad, I see you nodding your head in, in agreement there. It, it, it's just a fantastic book. And it just, it's, it, it encompasses life as a whole, but also business as well. Talks a lot, of, and just ownership, owner, owning up to the mistakes, owning up to the, the shortfalls that you have in your own business. Uh, because in the end, it's, it's, it's all your responsibility. And uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, and, and again, it's a life book, but uh, David Goggins uh, can't hurt me. That's uh, awesome. Great, great book. Um, you know, it really makes you appreciate um, if you were blessed with growing up in a great family and a great environment. It really makes you appreciate the things that you have and also the things that you work for along the way. So two great books, uh, not only in business, but also in life as a whole. Awesome. I like it. That's a really good book. I want to actually read it again today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. We've actually, I think on two episodes ago, we had somebody mention the same exact one. So it's kind of funny um, on that. So that's awesome. It's a great book. But anyways, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, my social media handles are just simply Tim Rumler on Twitter, um, uh, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, I've just found that it's a lot easier to, to use one name for all of them. Um, oh, yeah. And then, and then uh, uh, Tim at realestate1.net for business. Tim at realestate1.net. So, yeah. Perfect. I like for it. For sure. Well, um, thanks for coming out and uh, sharing your story with us today. Absolutely. You guys are doing great things. Thanks for what you're doing. Yep. Are these working? All right. That's right. There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh, Mine keeps falling. It doesn't like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe? What do we, do we got to point out? Hey, I think there's a subscription button like. It might be, it might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. 
I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess so. Uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah, I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. Uh, we should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't take but, four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. Yeah.